The ultimate question, is the Italian sparkling wine Metodo Classico better than the French Champagne? Let's talk about it with Simone Mazè, Group General Manager at Cantine Ferrari. Hi Simone, thanks for being with us today, how are you doing? Hi, all good. We are, we are here Great. today to talk about Ferrari and Ferrari is not about cars but it's about something else. So what are we talking about? Yes, uh, this time Ferrari is about wine, it's not about car. You know, both are indeed uh, Italian excellences, I would say, but uh, the category is totally different. My Ferrari, our Ferrari, is a company that uh, has been owned by Gruppo Lunelli since 1952. Currently, Ferrari is led by the third generation of the Lunelli family. Ferrari is considered by many people one of the world's great sparkling wine. Therefore, we are talking about sparkling wine right now. Ferrari was founded in 92. I mean, uh, Ferrari as a brand as a winery in Trento by Giulio Ferrari, who first planted Chardonnay grapes in Italy. This guy had this vision about wine, was the first time to do this thing in our, in our country. Ferrari became the celebratory toast of Italy and leader in Metodo Classic of Parfum wine market. Therefore, we are one of the most important wines in this, in this segment, uh, not only in Italy, but also in Europe and uh, all over the world. Starting in the 80s, the Lunelli family broadened, broadened the group with the acquisition of, uh, of Surgiva brand and with other brands like Segnana, that is a grappa, very nice grappa made here in Trentino. Then the group decided to buy a Prosecco company, a Prosecco winery placed in uh, Valdo Biadene and our brand is Bizol 1542. This is the name of our Prosecco, super luxury and very premium sparkling wine as well. And then we have other still wines in Tuscany and Umbria, but not only there because we have also wines coming, still wines, it's a both red and white coming from here, from our region, from Trentino. Therefore, our group is, uh, is pretty wide in terms of different kinds of wines that we have, but the common factor that we have is the level, the high level of our products and the high level of our positioning in terms of brand. This is our history and this is our Ferrari that we are talking about, basically. If it's something that you can disclose, how many bottles approximately do you, do you produce every year? What I can say is that we are a small company and we want to be a small company because uh, it's not a matter of how many bottles, but it's more, it's more a matter of what kind of bottles we produce. And as I said, we try to do always our best. And because of also the prices that we recently at one, I would say that uh, we are able to, to tackle this and to get these results since uh, the very beginning of the history of this company, but also in the very last years. And this is a very interesting hook uh, to ask you the second question. And I will link it to the fact that you said uh, sparkling wine and not champagne and specifically Metodo Classico, or we can call it as well Bollicine, because uh, we need to distinguish this uh, from uh, the French champagne. So what is the comparison that you see between your product and the French product? Now you see, this, this is a very interesting and very also popular question that anytime we go abroad, uh, people ask us because it's not so easy, maybe mainly for people living abroad and not being Italian to understand the difference. Italy and France, I have to say, they have always occupied the first two places in the ranking of the main wine producer in the world. And this is something, this is a fact. What really differentiates our country from France, however, is the diversity of the offer, I would say. In Italy, we have many, many more varieties of wine because 
every single variety is a specific expression of the specific territory from which this variety comes. Our key points, I mean, the Italian winemakery school or tradition is based on tradition, on territory, on history. And these three factors, in my opinion, allow us to always keep the quality level of our wines at the maximum. And uh, this is not any way valid only in Italy, but also, I mean, for Italian wines that stay in Italy, but also for Italian wines that go abroad. At Ferrari Lunelli specifically, we had never compromised with, with quality. And uh, for sure, this uh, requires anyway efforts, uh, as you can imagine, patient, because uh, wine uh, has uh, its own uh, anyway times uh, and must comply with the rules of the nature to be ready. We need, you need time to, to be ready in the barrels. It's a process, people involved from the, from, from the grapes till the, the final bottle. Therefore, it's a very complicated process and you don't necessarily are able to control everything because something comes from nature and a human being cannot influence it. Therefore, uh, it's, it's a challenge for us to make people understand that we are, I would say in a very simple word, at the same level of champagne, even if not uh, more, I would say, because the production method is, is exactly the same. I always say we are a champ an Italian champagne made with grapes from Dolomites. And with, few, with these few words, most of the people understand, but you know, most of the time, when a, when a person living abroad see or taste is a sparkling wine, he immediately recalls Prosecco. But in, in this case, it's a different story. It's a different product. Therefore, it's crucial. It's, it's very important for us to let the people understand this. And we are working on that, and we have been working on that. And, and we hope that this interview can help you in this direction. And um, as I'm not a specialist, uh, if I think about wine, uh, immediately I think about France and I think about Italy. But something called globalization happened in the last, uh, I would say, 20 years. Do you see globalization impacting the volumes and the market shares also in your market? Meaning, do you see valuable challenges from uh, Latin America, for example, or Australia? Or do you see uh, still a predominance of France and Italy? But, you know, I think that for sure there are many other countries like Spain, uh, like uh, Argentina, Chile, South Africa, Australia, that are indeed gaining market share in different areas and, and regions, working on quality and being able to keep high, very high, the quality level of our products will be crucial for the future development abroad. Because for us, for the kind of winery that we have into our market, onto our market, we are not able to fight against volume. We are able to fight with our quality, in my opinion. Therefore, it's not a matter of scale, but it's a matter of tasting. And this is why in this group, we are extremely focused on developing our quality for today, but also for the future. How about your business model? How defensible is it? How can you protect yourself from the business attacks of other companies? And also, I would like to know from you if you are cooking something new in terms of products for your customers. Well, honestly, I have to say that we are proud to be the first to produce partly wine of excellence with the classic method. And this is already a distinctive way to introduce ourselves to the market. I think that when something is excellent, it cannot be duplicated. Many people, many other companies try to do it, but it's not the same thing in the final result. Furthermore, I think that we produce an artisan product, which is the expression of the ter territory where it's produced. Therefore, it's a matter of mixing also the product, the wine, with the, with the culture. It's a combined proposal to the market, not only a matter of drinking, but it's a matter of 
giving people emotions. I always say we don't sell wine. We sell a key to enter a world, a world of emotion, a world of inspiration, and a world of uh, senses, tastes. For sure, we are cooking something in our kitchen because innovation is extremely important. Innovation means quality. It means always to be really cutting edge in terms of uh, machineries that you have or uh, plants or pipeline. Every year, more or less, we launch something new because of the year, for instance, or because of the new kind of wine that we want to produce because we have a request from the market. Recently, we launched Giulio Ferrari 2008. It was the 2nd of June of this year with a big success already almost sold uh, in in few months all the bottles for the future we are already, we have already something in our pipeline waiting for i would say first half of november and also for the first months of 2021 and i can tell you you will be one of the first one to know this news coming from us I would be happy to, to receive that and uh, f- feel free to send over a bottle <laughs> as well. <laughs> for sure. Want, if you want. To. <laughs> no, just, it just will kidding. be a pleasure for me. It will be a pleasure. <laughs> just kidding. And um, as uh, the, one of the scopes of this uh, Italian initiative is to connect Italian companies with people abroad, uh, what are the opportunities that you see for uh, a foreign company or a foreign person that would like to work? Uh, in Italy, in the wine, uh, in the wine market, or abroad with Italy. I think that the opportunities for foreigners who want to work with the world of Italian wine are cent- certainly many, many, and growing. The export business represents the great challenge and the opportunity that the Italian wine companies are targeting, because uh, we have lands to explore abroad countries that are very, very big in comparison with our country, with our, with our territory. Therefore, it's enormous, the opportunity out of our borders. Mm-hmm. Our wine specifically is a product that represents one of the excellence of Made in Italy, as I said at the, at the beginning of this, of this interview. Sometimes it is, surprises me to see that uh, our Italian wine is uh, perceived abroad more in terms of uh, quality level and whatever more than amongst our borders you know because we we always tend to underestimate what we do here and we always try to look far or to see other people doing things better than us but most of the time it's exactly the opposite our best is here close to us not necessarily far from us Being a foreigner who has the curiosity to study and to understand the culture and tradition of our companies, I think that the opportunities is is huge. The professional figures are and will be increasingly requested by the market. It's a matter of uh, being focused and having a clear target to reach with uh, a clear vision. Simone, let me thank you so much for being here with us today and let me wrap up what we just discussed. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, and take care. And uh, I will send you soon a uh, few surprise jar for your testing uh, in UK. At home. <laughs> I will do an unboxing. <laughs> Great. Today, thanks to Simone, we learned that number one, Volume and market share are not synonyms of success, especially when you play in the luxury industry. Number two, developing the market in a systemic way should be a primary objective in every industry. Number three, there are plenty of opportunities for Italian wine to expand abroad. Could one of these opportunities be for you? All right, thanks for being with us today. If you like this video, please hit the like button down here and subscribe our channel to see more like this. Thanks to the Nanubius Hotel in Regent Park, London for hosting us and see you soon on Italians. Cheers and ciao!